Okay, this section is going to be about being able to inspect the valve seats in the head. So as you know, we've been talking a lot about the cylinder barrels, the wear of those, and you know, taking the valves out of the head and springs and so on, disassembly. But we should be able to get to a point, you know, as we're overhauling a cylinder, we need to be able to look up in there and determine if the valve seats are any good, or you know, do they have any, can they be serviced, have any grindability left in them, and so on. Um, uh, <clears throat> so a couple of things, what we should be able to do, like I said, is you'll be able to, at some point, stare down inside that combustion chamber up there at the cylinder head and be able to tell if those valve seats are serviceable. Okay, so we'll get into a little explanation of that. Now, the valves themselves, of course, we've already talked a little bit about, but for the most part, your Lycoming exhaust valves, they're a mandatory replacement item. According to Lycoming's Service Bulletin 242, uh, they are a mandatory replacement. They also live a pretty tough life inside the engine, so it's usually best to just kind of start off with new parts. But if you're calling it an overhaul, it is a mandatory item for the overhaul process. The intake valves, uh, the... Uh, Again, that edge thickness, that minimum permissible edge thickness, you'll see in your manual can go down to about 60,000. So typically what I do is I'll take like a, that zero to one inch micrometer, just set it at the 60, and if that edge thickness is going to be getting anywhere near that 60 thousandths, then that valve gets tossed. Uh, because when we go, of course, we'll polish these things up, measure the stems up and that kind of thing, but then we'll be chucking the valve up in the valve grinder and, of course, refacing that the face on there is going to narrow that edge thickness down. So we have to start out with some pretty good thickness there. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so to have an understanding of what's going on with the, the valve here, so up on the board, I've got this, this, so this is the, this is the valve seat insert that's up there in the cylinder head. Of course, we talked about how that's a tight fit. Usually they're about 8,000 tight fit. But how they come up with a, so we typically say that intake valves are on a 30 degree angle. So the nominal basic angle of an intake valve face and seat is 30 degrees. The exhaust is 45 degrees. Um, there's some test questions on that. Why do we use a 30 degree angle on the valve seat? It provides for better airflow characteristics in the cylinder. The 45 degree angle on the exhaust provides for better heat dissipation. Now, you can't look up in the cylinder at this point too, and, and it's hard to tell even the difference between the 30 and the 45 degree, but that's just some test question stuff that they, they talk about why that's done. Automotive world, they typically will just go 45 degree on both your intake and exhaust seats up in those cylinder heads. But how we come up when we're looking at the seat and valve assembly, so if I come off of this line, the valve seat itself, and that's 45 degrees, that's where I come up with that angle. So that's how the angle's established. Uh, let me go ahead and erase that out of the way for a second now again. And I wanna show you what's going on with the valve face itself. The valve face, and I'm gonna exaggerate this so you can see the difference here, but, whoops, didn't throw off very good exaggeration there. I wanna come with a little bit different angle. Here's my edge up here. There's the head coming across. First, we come over here to our keeper and stuff. But you'll notice how the, I've exaggerated this here with a pretty good space, but so if I come up off of, come up off of this valve face angle, it's gonna be 44 degrees. Well, typically when I grind valve faces and seats, I usually go with what they call a, uh, I usually go with a half a degree. The manual says, I, I did it according to the manual here, uh, you can have a one, one degree maximum, and it's called interference fit. That pen kind of lightened up on me there. But so where I had the 45 degree seat nominal angle on the seat itself, my valve face, when I, so when I take this valve over to the grinder and I regrind that face on the valve, I'm, I grind it to about 44 and a half. So I go with a one half degree of interference fit. What that does, you know, you got your spring 
up here on the solar head, pulling, putting the pressure in this thing, it provides for a better sealing, kind of like a chevron seal or whatever here. So rather than try to have two big flat surfaces coming together, this does provide for a better seal on there, concentrating that stuff down to one kind of a fine point there. And again, like I say, the manual does say one degree maximum interference fit. <clears throat> um, so you'll notice one thing here too, where this point of contact is. I want to have that point of contact is close to the outer edge of the valve. And so if I were to have like a top view where this valve is in, here's the stem in the center, and then here is that valve seat running around, or that face running around there. If I were to have put some ink mark on this, in fact, I should use the blue color because there's a blue ink called Prussian blue that's utilized. So there's an FA test question. How do I check the fit between the valve face and the valve seat? How do I check the fit between the valve face and the valve seat is by the use of, and my blue's dead here evidently, but I would want to use a, it's called a, a Prussian blue. So it's like the word Russian, but with a P in front of it, Prussian blue. I'm gonna throw this guy in the garbage. Bingo. Um, so <clears throat> what we're talking about here is if I was putting this Prussian blue on this valve, so this is a nice big one so we can see it in the video here a little bit better, but I were to put this line on here, you know, all the way around like that where I got it on there, then once I drop it down and it makes contact with that seat like there and give it a little wiggle back and forth, then it should end up showing that point of contact where I would have just a little dab and, uh, I'll get rid of that. <clears throat> But it would be that, look more like that, where, it's, where, the, where that point of contact is towards that outer edge of the face of the seat there as it comes down to contacts. Okay, so then here comes the cylinder in for overhaul. And, of course, it's been in service and running. So over a period of time, this valve has gotten pitted. You know, it's all damaged, whatever. So then we have to come in with a, a stone, and we, we grind that in there. So the stones are set up in 45s, 30s. And I'll basically just grind this and we're going to be doing some demonstration of these, so you'll get some hands on of that as well too when you see the demonstration but you'll come off and you will have ground off all that damaged area but look what's happened now is this point of contact out here has moved away from the face of the seat so then so when I'm grinding the valve seat up in the cylinder head then the next thing after I've got my uh, valve face or valve seat uh, resurfaced here. Now to get this point of contact I have to come in with what they call a narrowing angle. So I'll come in with a little flatter a 15 degree stone so it's called a 15 degree narrowing angle. Okay and now I will have ground that metal off of there and you'll notice now the point of contact is back where it's supposed to be with that narrowing angle. Okay, so here comes determining if a valve seat has any grindability left in it. If this narrowing angle gets out towards the outer edge of the valve seat, you know, in order to repair it, uh, if that narrowing angle is starting to get out there, then the valve seat grinding is done. So that's how you determine if the valve seat had any grindability left in it was if the narrowing angle is nearing the outer portion of the valve. So that's like this valve seat that's been removed. If you look at it, you'll see the narrowing angle on here is all the way out towards the outer edge. So that valve seat, that's always that's why that valve seat got removed from the cylinder head it was in. Because <clears throat> what's happening here is every time you are grinding that valve seat and repairing it, that valve is moving deeper and deeper up into the cylinder head. So then what's happening, as that's happening, as that's happening, the uh, clearance up here, what they call the dry tappet clearance, as this valve moves deeper and deeper up here, I'm losing my dry tappet clearance that I have here. So there's another FA test question is, 
how do I adjust in that clearance on the valve train? This is also this hydraulic lifter down here can function properly, having the proper clearance. So there's a FA test question that says, uh, what is the uh, operating clearance of this valve system? So when the lifter and thing pumps up, it should operate with zero clearance. But when I assemble the engine and adjust the end so that lifter has can function properly back there, we'll talk about that as a separate topic, how the hydraulic lifter works. But uh, how I had, I should have a specified amount above zero. So like on your Lycoming engine, you'll put it, the clearance is 28 to 80 thousandths. And, and how that's adjustable is by replacement of push rods. So there's the push rods in the engine, um, and they've got little, they got numbers stamped on. So here's our push rod in the engine, and they got little numbers on it indicating their length. But what happens is, if I were to keep on grinding this further than I'm supposed to, uh, that valve's getting deeper and deeper, and I may not be able to purchase a push rod that that's that's short. And so they they you know have a nice. I think they have like five or six different lengths of push rods you can buy, but you will hit a limit. And so because that's the determine if the valve seat is done, then they just simply do not sell a push rod that short. And so you are in trouble. You know, and this is one of the last things you're doing. You put the engine together is checking this dry tap at clearance. You got the cylinder on, it's all torqued, you've assembled the valve train, you know, and you're just short of putting the rocker box covers on and calling it good. And then you go to check your dry tap at clearance, which is done by push it on your thumb, which collapses the dry lifter down here. Then you stick a feeler gauge up here between the toe of the rocker arm and the valve stem tip and checking that dry tap at clearance to make sure it's in between that 28 and 80 thousandths. That's how you actually check it. And if you don't have that clearance and you've already got the shortest push rod because someone ground the valve seat too far, you gotta go back and start all over. And so that's why we're, we're uh, not too lenient with uh, determining that if it valve uh, narrowing angles getting anywhere near that outer edge, we call it good, and the valve seat, along with the valve guides, also have to be replaced. Okay, at this point, I would love to say, are there any questions? But obviously, you're not here that, so we'll have to handle that in a Zoom meeting or something like that. See if you got any questions on that.